Uh, also with us, Bob Bianchi, criminal defense uh, and law enforcement policy expert, host at the Law and Crime Network. Um, Bob, good to see you this morning as always. I'm curious, just as we look at what and, and, and listen to what we saw and heard yesterday, who do you think had the stronger closing argument? Hmm. Uh, stylistically, the prosecutor did a great job. And I've been very critical of the prosecutor for some ethics, yeah. in my opinion, violations that have occurred during the course of this case. But he really put it together well uh, for what he, was, what he was trying to position. The defense lawyer got out what the defense lawyer needed to get out, but it wasn't just stylistically as, uh, as good as the prosecutor was. But in the end of the day, as the judge instructs the jury, what the lawyers say in openings and closings is not evidence. The evidence is what came out on the witness stand. But I would like to see the defense do uh, a little bit more with what they had because they had a lot to work with. Erica, this, the one thing he did very well was talking about the rush to judgment. As a homicide prosecutor myself, I've never charged a case so quickly when they didn't have all the evidence in, the autopsies hadn't been concluded, witness interviews hadn't been done, and he basically used that. And we know this as prosecutors. Don't give the defense an opportunity to use a rush to judgment as a reason for why the charges were brought. So he was pretty effective in that aspect. Bob, let's talk about the law here, because a key, key argument is this question of self-defense. That, that is the central argument of his defense attorneys. The, the, the prosecution, in the closing arguments, really hammering home this idea that you can't hide behind self-defense if you created the danger. If you put yourself there, say, a 17-year-old traveling from out of state, but tell us how the, how the defense responded to that argument and, and where you think the standard lies in this case. Yeah, great question, Jim. I, I, first of all, I don't think the defense responded to it well, but the jury charge that I have in front of me right now does. And what is very clear with regard to this issue of provocation, and, and essentially what that means is that you can't provoke an attack, and then if you are, if, if somebody responds to it, you have an opportunity to kill them. But what this right. jury charge says is that uh, the defendant had to engage in unlawful conduct that was likely to provoke others to attack him, and who in fact does provoke others to attack him and on top of which which really aren't the facts of this case if, if the, the facts of this case were he he was being pursued the prosecutor wants to argue just because he brought a weapon which many people had weapons out there and remember this is wisconsin not like in new jersey or new york where the gun laws are so strict um that that was the provocation but then even further in the jury charge jim it says that even if you're the initial aggressor that you provoke the attack if somebody then confronts you with deadly force you have a right to protect yourself and respond. So I don't see the problem. It's good the prosecutor got that in there, but the way the, the law reads to this jury, I don't see it applying to the facts of this case. Hmm. Bob Bianchi, th thanks so much. So, so many questions to resolve. Of course, we'll do what we got to do, which is watch the trial as it plays out. Also.